We begin with the Gravitas exclusive. For most of the century, Shinzo Abe has dominated Japan's politics. He's the longest serving prime minister in this country's history. Abe's contributions are many, but the one that stands out is perhaps the creation of Quad. He first spelled out the vision of the Quad at the Indian Parliament in 2007. Shinzo Abe has since shaped this alliance. He led a diplomatic initiative to elevate the status of the Quad. He made it a real forum for leaders to gather to discuss the challenges in the Indo-Pacific and beyond. So what does Shinzo Abe, the man and the mind behind the Quad, think of the grouping today? Has the Quad lived up to his vision? Has it delivered on its promises? Why are Quad leaders reluctant to name China? Will the Quad have to deal with the Chinese invasion of Taiwan? Is Beijing's threat of taking Taiwan by force a serious one? Or is it just posturing? Yesterday, Joe Biden said the US will defend Taiwan militarily. What does Shinzo Abe think of that? Earlier today, I put all these questions to Mr. Abe himself. Here's an excerpt from that conversation. Mr. Abe, welcome to be on. Yeah, so I've been looking forward to this uh, uh, you know, production. I'm very happy to be on the show. Today's newspapers in Japan, and I'm sure elsewhere as well, uh, talk about US President Joe Biden reaffirming his commitment to defending Taiwan, only for the White House to uh, immediately clarify that their policy on Taiwan remains unchanged. Do you believe that the US will militarily intervene if China were to invade Taiwan? Well, I think his comment was intentionally made, uh, but you must forget the fact that uh, he has in the past also made a similar uh, comment that the uh, U.S. will be uh, you know, willing to uh, fully defend uh, Taiwan uh, if uh, China were to militarily uh, invade Taiwan. Uh, so, uh, you know, that's on the very ground of uh, uh, staying uh, strategically ambiguous in terms of uh, policy. And on the very point that the White House came right out saying, oh, our policy of, um, you know, staying ambiguous uh, uh, strategically uh, has not changed. The fact that they uh, clarify that right after uh, President Biden's comment uh, actually gives us a signal that the U.S. is starting to uh, look at the change of the policy there. And I have been an advocate of changing this amb ambiguous strategy. Um, at the time when the U.S. took this ambiguous strategy, uh, there was a huge gap of military power uh, between U.S. and China. But as we see China closing that gap very rapidly with a very strong military power uh, that they're building up, it's dangerous to keep this uh, policy in place. So I would, uh, uh, in consequence, uh, welcome President Biden's comment. Uh, his comment flatly would signal a change of uh, that uh, ambiguous strategy policy when it comes to China-Taiwan relationship. So let me understand this correctly. You're saying that with yesterday's statement, no matter what the White House has said in clarification, you believe that there is a shift in American policy vis-a-vis -vis Taiwan. You know, this is uh, uh, actually a comment uh, given directly from President Biden, and uh, he talked about uh, U.S.'s full commitment to defend uh, Taiwan, uh, even though the White House came out and denied, uh, you know, any overreaction to that, saying that it's the same policy. Uh, but I think essentially what President Biden had said shows the truth, and it was a message to China. Very interesting. Do you believe that Xi Jinping is going to uh, attack Taiwan and take it by force? Hello, oh. Of course, um, you know, Xi Jinping's policy of one China is out and clear, as it had been stated. And they have clearly shown that uh, uh, forceful um, action uh, by force uh, is one of the options that they might actually ex exercise. But if U.S. were to clearly uh, be in a position to um, interfere uh, with such action of uh, military invasion uh, by China, uh, I think China would uh, consequently have to give up the idea uh, because China certainly doesn't want to go into war with U.S. So what do you think the Chinese military is trying to do as they surround Taiwan, as they, you know, satellite images have come out of them taking out uh, certain targets? 
Uh, do you think this is a pressure tactic? Do you think that uh, the Chinese president is preparing to mount some sort of an invasion while the world remains distracted with Ukraine, with supply chain disruptions, with economic pressures? Well, what would be the best scenario for China's perspective, of course, is for Taiwan to voluntarily uh, become part of China, but such is not likely to occur. There are a couple of stories I can think of when it comes to how China uh, would uh, make happen one China story. Uh, for example, uh, China uh, could be on a very forefront of uh, uh, trying to um, have an influence over Taiwan uh, as it makes Taiwan situation unstable when it comes to uh, political activities or economic activities. Uh, however, on that very point, I must not forget to mention that the current administration in Taiwan uh, is a popular administration. Uh, there is quite a bit of stability when it comes to politics and economy. Uh, but, you know, things might happen, and when that change comes, that would be a window of opportunity, uh, I think, from the perspective of China. Uh, there is a, a great deal of influence uh, to, over Taiwan uh, from China, of course, as you know, economically and also in terms of media control. When you say things might happen, you're, are you suggesting that China might engineer political instability in Taiwan and that would be the route that they would prefer? There are various possibilities. Um, the fact that uh, you know China and Taiwan speak the same language uh, economically, uh, they are relying on each other. There's quite a bit of uh, uh, going back and forth between the two countries uh, that gives us, you know, a lot of touch points uh, where things could possibly change. And the situation is different from the Ukraine situation. Let's talk about your relationship with India and Prime Minister Modi. How do you describe it? Of course, uh, we had to stop uh, diplomatic visits uh, during the uh, COVID pandemic uh, for two years. Uh, but uh, you can see the historical visits that we've made back and forth. Of course, um, you know, I was uh, very uh, energetic when, uh, when it comes to strengthening the bilateral relationship during my second uh, administration, but I would go back as far as my first uh, administration where uh, I visited India and I gave a, a parliamentary speech and I talked about the two uh, seas being united. Uh, this became really uh, the concept uh, that led to Quad and uh, economic uh, uh, collaborations uh, thus after that we have elaborated on. I have always uh, been saying that uh, uh, this bilateral re relationship between Japan and India uh, is the type of bilateral relationship that has the biggest potential of all. Uh, and we are actually starting to see all the fruit uh, of the relationship. So uh, I'm actually going to uh, step up as the president of Japan, or Japan Indo uh, Association, taking the position of uh, uh, formerly served uh, by Yoshio Mori. It has a history of 120 years. It's actually longer uh, than uh, US uh, Japan, Japan US Association. You've also had a long association with Mr. Modi uh, in particular, and you've known him since the time that he was the Chief Minister of Gujarat. Uh, uh, can you tell us about your engagements and interactions with him? And I ask this because when two leaders meet, there's a lot of talk about personal chemistry. How much does personal chemistry, how, how big a role does it play in international diplomacy? Uh, we've spent uh, quite a bit of time, you know, talking, you know, doing other uh, matters uh, around our diplomatic uh, activities. So relationship goes deep. Uh, our understanding towards national security, uh, the world issues that uh, we need to all uh, collaborate, solve together, uh, are uh, very much, uh, uh, you know, united. And I respect uh, Prime Minister Modi for the fact that uh, uh, he's a quick decision maker. Uh, he has that power to make things happen. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Weon is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news on the move.